CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good morning and welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Megan Packer. This week we are tackling a difficult topic, but one that has to be discussed, teen suicide. Whether it's caused by a chemical imbalance, social media pressures, or bullying at school, it is on the rise. We begin with this story from CBS 46 reporter Adam Harding. Making me a 911, what is your emergency? This is the call for help. It's for a girl on live on Facebook has a bag over her head and is inside the tub and trying to commit suicide or something. In the past month in this city of Macon. Yes, she is at her home or somewhere and these people are watching that her live video is going up. Is at 35 now. The haunting reality for one mother. Why didn't I see the signs? Whose identity we're protecting. My greatest fear is for me to bury my any of my children before me. Her 15-year-old daughter live streaming on Facebook her attempted suicide. The report from police, she took a lot of pills, put a plastic bag over her head, then hit record online. She felt like she didn't have any friends. She was like, everybody picked on her. Everybody wanted to fight her. It was one thing after another. This is my passion. She survived after Captain Shermaine Jones and his team of deputies scoured the city, searching for the home where the teen was live streaming from. Lucky for us at that, at that point, the people that recognized who she was and was calling was, was giving addresses that they knew of. So once they started that process, we just started sending deputies to different addresses trying to figure out which one is the exact address. So Jones they, says the teen stayed online for nearly an hour. Time is, is precious at that point. She was in, in, a, in a pretty critical condition. Thank the Lord we were able to find her when we did. It's a difficult conversation the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is now asking we all have. It's never too soon to talk about suicide. Special Agent Trevor Randall's focus is on child deaths. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for our kids ages 15 to 17. And the GBI's latest numbers, child suicides across Georgia appear to be on the rise with an all-time high of 51 in 2015. And there's no one particular reason why. We no longer call it teen suicide awareness because our children as young as 8, 9, and 10 are committing suicide now. This year alone, 18 kids have taken their own lives, 14 in the last two months. And so they drive you to kill yourself. And sooner the or later, topic gaining national out. attention with the recent TV series, 13 Reasons Why, a show documenting the events leading up to a teen suicide. It's prompted some metro school districts to send warning letters to parents urging students to not watch it alone. Hell was crying out for help. The GBI says they have no data linking any recent youth suicide to the show. This is a conversation that definitely needs to be had. This year, agents are now partnering with teachers to let them know it's okay to talk about this. How else do you make the community aware of why our children are dying if you're not talking about it? And on these city streets. A lot of people don't want to talk about it. I do. One family is already beginning the dialogue. This is nothing that we can run from. It can happen to anyone. Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. And the Atlanta Bay Centers for Disease Control released disturbing findings earlier this month. Researchers found suicide rates among 15 to 19 year old girls doubled between 2007 and 2015. As for teenage boys of the same age, the suicide rate rose more than 30%. Those numbers most certainly are fueling discussion. Our first guest is GBI Special Agent in Charge, Tribor Randall. You heard from her in Adam's story there. She oversees uh, the review of child deaths in Georgia. And unfortunately, Tribor, I know you have an updated number of where child suicides stand in Georgia right now. Well, unfortunately, the fact that we're back here even discussing this again um, is telling us that something else has occurred. At the time we were looking at 18, we're now at 26 just for the year 2016 of children who have killed themselves in the state of Georgia. And what is the age range of those children? Those ranges are from 9 to 17. Um, here in Georgia, our age for fatality review is 0 to 17. So again, we don't refer to it as a teen suicide uh, prevention or initiative because these are children 9, 10, and 11 years old as well included in this demographic, unfortunately. As you review the deaths, is there any 
thread, any common thread you're picking up on? Well, we know uh, from the data that we gather, there are some things that are just known. Our white males, for example, are at higher risk of suicide. We know that of the 26th this year, at least half of those uh, involve weapons, uh, such as a handgun. So those are some things that are known, but oftentimes, more importantly, what is unknown, um, unlike in the popular series that talked about all the reasons why, oftentimes there are no re reasons. Um, there are no suicide notes, for example. There were no signs that a parent saw or something that they thought maybe they missed. But we do know that um, when we review each of these cases, we go into details about the background, um, the history, and oftentimes these children have voiced suicidal ideations or were being treated for depression. And of course, in this day and age, we've got social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. They are providing instant feedback. Uh, what are you seeing with, with social media? A, kids' involvement with it. B, are these sites doing enough to help protect the children? Well, unfortunately, you know, everybody wants to place blame in one particular area or another, but it's all of our responsibility. Whether you're a parent, a caregiver, um, whether you're an administrator dealing with a social media site, it is all of our responsibility to watch for these things, watch for the signs. Um, recently here in Georgia, we were made aware of the, the blue whale game um, that led one child to commit suicide by playing a, a game that was signed up for online. And parents, you know, or, or people our age will say, well, will someone really follow instructions of someone, a stranger that tells them to self-harm? And I'm here to tell you, absolutely, our children um, will get caught up in those types of things through social media. And we'll talk more about that, that, that game actually coming up in just a little bit in the program. How about the schools in Georgia? Uh, the, plenty of programs in place to prevent bullying and, and work against this. Are you uh, pleased with what you see in place in the schools or do you think they could be doing more as well? Well, I think now more than we've ever seen before, uh, the Department of Education, for example, is partnering with us to be able to raise awareness. Um, we're looking at um, creating a series of PSAs that will address peer-to-peer counseling. Um, we know that children may not talk with their parents, but they certainly talk with each other. Um, in many of the cases that I looked at, a parent may not have been uh, told by the child that they felt like they were nothing or that they didn't want to live, but oftentimes they told a friend um, that they were planning on harming themselves. So we know that there needs to be a shift and we need to be training our children even to recognize the signs if a friend uh, tells them that they're sad or they're depressed or they're thinking about committing suicide. I can understand a child might not want to go to their mom or dad with that information, maybe feel more comfortable with a friend. Absolutely. What, what do you want moms and dads out there to know as far as you know, monitoring social media, talking with the kids? I would imagine nothing is off limits. You need to be keeping an eye over their shoulder. Absolutely, um, nothing is off limits. That's our message to the parents and the caregivers. Um, you have to monitor what they're doing. You know, there were times where when I was growing up, you know, we couldn't lock ourselves in a room for eight hours. Now we offer our kids that type of privacy and that's okay as long as you're comfortable with what's going on behind closed doors. Certainly if you see um, any shifts or any changes in their behavior, um, sometimes those things can indicate there may be a problem. Not any one thing alone or by itself, any one issue, but um, as a group, if you notice these changes and your child has either suffered in the past from depression or seems to be depressed, you need to get them attention immediately. We can no longer wait to see if they're just going through a bump in the road. And you need to be involved and ask those questions Absolutely. and facilitate that discussion. All right, Tribor Randall with the GBI, thank you so much for sharing your insight. Thank you. When Public Affairs on Peach returns this morning, a Metro Atlanta man is sharing his personal experience with teen suicide. We'll be right back.